from the Reynolds Journalism Institute at the University of Missouri. Welcome to Global Journalists. I'm Josh Kranzberg, in for Jason McClure. Every year, a handful of journalists from around the world are selected to be Alfred Friendly Fellows. These journalists are partnered with American news outlets in the hopes that they can learn and help spread U.S. news ideals, namely fair and accurate reporting. We're lucky enough to sit down with them to talk about their experiences reporting and what they hope to get from their fellowships. Joining us now is Tobile Hans. He's a reporter out of Johannesburg, South Africa, doing work for Africa Business News. He'll spend his fellowship with Forbes Media. Mr. Hans, welcome to Global Journalist. Thank you so much, Josh. So South Africa's media, according to Freedom House, is considered partly free. Um, simply put, talk to me about the environment there and your experiences as a journalist in South Africa. Okay. Um, that's correct. South Africa um, is free to journalists. Journalists are free to do anything they want to do. And um, as you know that we are a new democracy, um, we're experimenting things and so forth and so, and so forth. Uh, but what I can tell you now uh, is that um, since now, uh, after two, d two decades of democracy, and uh, things are starting to, um, to have cracks, you know, journalists um, um, are not feeling comfortable doing work, but they still do the work anyway. Um, there's no political in interference, but um, you sense uh, somehow that um, politicians are not happy with the work that we're doing presently. Um, if you look at ANC, um, the, 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 the ruling um, uh, party, um, they've been trying to introduce um, laws to control journalism and saying that um, uh, the, um, the self-appointed um, uh, press ombuds, they are not doing their work. So now they feel like um, they need to have someone from the parliament appointed by the government to control the media, especially the print media. There's not much problems with um, the broadcasting, but it's print media that um, seems to be um, um, are facing challenges. Why do you think that is? Um, a majority of print, print media is not owned by the government. So um, you will um, have um, two um, separate uh, uh, groups of those who are pro the government and those who are sort of trying to do their work. Uh, also, you, um, you must understand that uh, some of the people that um, are, are owning the media houses now, um, they used to be um, a political activists themselves. So they have some uh, sympathy with the government, you know, but um, they, they will, you will have those um, that are um, I'm, I'm trying to do their work, you know. So that's, that is, those are the people that the government is trying to suppress. Um, what's the reaction been in newsrooms in South Africa with the introduction or the talk of introducing these sorts of laws? Um, the situation is very tense, uh, but um, thanks, thanks with that uh, we have um, some advocacy uh, groups like um, the SANEF. The SANEF is the, is the body of, of editors that has been um, open in negotiations with government and also um, the other um, uh, groupings um, um, that um, advocate um, 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 a free press and so forth. Um, the government is open to discuss things with them. And uh, I know that um, there's this law um, that has been, um, oh no, they started introducing it in 2011, and then it's been ongoing, you know. Um, they have not um, approved of it because it, it, it has been challenged. And uh, we are so grateful the fact that, uh, to the fact that uh, our law system is working um, so hard. Uh, they are not, as much as some of the judges are appointed by, by the government, but they work independently of the government. Do you think the, the fact that uh, South Africa is a relatively young democracy, um, that that's playing into the tensions uh, between, the journal between, journalism, between journalists and the, uh, and the government? Yeah, uh, at, at, at some, at, to some extent, that, that is. Because um, if you think of it is that um, there were a lot of journalists who were activist journalists uh, were during the apartheid time. So those journalists, they have not um, changed their allegiance to the ruling party. So they sort of like still in the pocket of the government. Mm. And if, 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 if you look at it, uh, we have lost so much, so many journalists uh, to uh, being um, the government spokespeople, you know, spokesmen. You know, because at, at, at some point they come out, you know, as to now we supporting the government. Uh, but you have those young journalists like myself that are just um, new in the, in the in the profession that are trying to be independent, and and we're grateful that we get a support from international um, 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 organizations. Do you feel you have to fight even harder seeing journalists go to the other side? Do you feel that you have to? 
dig even deeper and fight even harder, even just to get a normal story? Yeah, we, 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 we fight so, so hard because um, if you look at it that, for example, in my newsroom, um, I'm one of the senior journalists in my newsroom, and um, that is not a norm um, in an environment um, where journalism is sort of... Um, um, I'm thriving because you will need people who have been there. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm relatively young um, to be a senior journalist in office. So at some point you don't know um, or you don't know um, the direction to take, you know, because we need uh, some advice from the, our seniors, our seniors that are not there. Um, well, reporters are mostly left alone, like you said. Violence against the media has ratcheted up recently. Um, in January of 2014, a freelance journalist, photojournalist, uh, was shot and killed while covering a protest. The first journalist killed in the country since democracy uh, took over in 1994. Um, do you feel safe as a journalist in South Africa? Uh, to be honest with you, I do feel safe. Uh, but if a journalist was shot um, during a protest, it could be anyone. It could be police. It could be anything. Um, in South Africa, there are so many um, outbreaks, um, the, the violence outbreaks that are happening. And those are the protests sometimes that are coming from communities because they are crying um, about service deliveries and so forth. And anyone can get shot, you know. I'm not saying that um, the journalist got shot uh, for some reason, but what I'm saying is that like, the violence in South Africa is still part of the, of the system. Is there fear when you're doing stories against the government or against politicians that will, you know will make them look bad? Is there any fear of, of retribution, of payback? You do get that sense. Um, uh, we don't get along all the time with, with, uh, with politicians. Um, most recently, uh, before I came here, um, I, I had an interview with one of the ANC Women's League um, 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 senior members. Um, she invited me to her house, you know. But when I was in her house, I felt that I was being controlled, you know. I was not myself as a journalist, you know. But um, you do also get um, situations where you go to a presser and uh, um, journalists who are sort of asking questions, uh, penetrating questions, are being uh, sidelined, you know, because um, they would tell you um, who they are welcoming in, who uh, is not welcome. How do you handle that? How do you handle knowing, like, you, what, you went to this politician's house and you, you said you felt like you were being controlled. How do you handle that in the moment? And how do you handle that when you get back to the newsroom? I think the, the important thing is, is to get to the place and get the story that you want to get, you know. Um, we're not out there as an opposition to politicians um, or trying to make them to look bad. But all we want to do is to reflect uh, or ask questions that needs to be asked to them, you know. We try to make that clear, and then if um, they are comfortable um, giving an interview, they will do so um, without you um, um, going around. So let's go to your fellowship. It's with Forbes Media in New York. Uh, what will you be doing with them? Um, as I'm coming from Forbes Africa, and uh, Forbes Africa is licensee of Forbes um, here in the States, um, one of the uh, bits that I've been given here um, is doing uh, an entrepreneurial section uh, of, of business, of which that's something that I'm looking forward to do because that's exactly what I'm doing back home. Uh, but also the other thing that I, I'm also interested in is the, their wealth um, tip, um, section of, of the business because um, we cannot do, from my office in, in, in South Africa, we cannot do the, f the checking on wealth of, of people on our own. We have to refer our information to Forbes mm -hmm. in the States to do it uh, on, our, on, on our behalf. But uh, now I think uh, that will give me an opportunity uh, to learn the, the, the ropes and tools to, um, um, how to do that and so that I can do it in the comfort of, of my own office. So what do you hope to take back to... South Africa once you're finished with, the, with this fellowship? Yeah, there's so much. There's so much to learn from the States. Uh, states is a very independent uh, media. Um, that is my outlook of things. Um, and also, uh, being here um, at, at this school, I've learned so much, you know. Um, I've learned um, 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 tools, um, how to sort of getting information um, that you cannot get. But um, I don't know if that will always be applicable in our office, but I, I, I hope that um, things will get better and so that we can also um, um, do uh, things as we please as journalists. But also, um, what I, would, I, I hope to learn from here um, are the skills um, to sort of make journalism much easier and also um, um, 
you know, to impart uh, whatever I'm learning um, from, from, from my experience here to my fellows um, 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 in, in office back home. Uh, in the Alfred Friendly Fellowship, uh, South Africa has ranked the uh, highest um, in terms of most free press. What similarities do you see um, between the South African media uh, climate and the United States media climate from what you've seen so far? Um, coming here, I was not shocked um, to see anything, you know, but um, having sat down um, with the, the, the journalism um, um, professors, I've realized that um, their work is much easier to get information, you know. As much as we are happy and comfortable, but it is very hard for us to get information. We have to go m through months and months trying to get information. And by that time we get that information, the story is already stale. Um, do you feel like there'll be a bit of a learning curve because of that, because information is a little more readily available in the United States? Yeah, that is, that is one of the things that um, I think um, um, is something that I would take home with me. So what does the future of journalism in South Africa look like? Um, the look, the fish. <laughs> Easy answer, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, but this is future. I wouldn't lie. I, I don't want to exaggerate things here. Um, I will come across as, as somebody who's uh, sort of um, I'm not telling lie, uh, telling um, um, the facts. But um, the future looks good in South Africa. But um, despite so, these laws, yeah, despite, despite the laws, despite the laws, that, laws are coming... that are being that are being um, introduced or um, at, at attempts to introduce them. But um, I think um, um, South Africa, if we can um, be together as journalists, because the other thing in South Africa again. Uh, journalists are not organized, are not allowed to organize themselves. There is no... Like uh, unionize? There's uh, no uniza okay. unionization of, of journalists in South Africa. If you're trying to do that, you get kicked out, you know? And why is that? Oh. Um, it is because um, the bosses, they feel uncomfortable um, because journalists... Um, oh, for, for example, I'll give you an example of um, a lady uh, who tried to uh, organize her colleagues. Um, it was not a question of organizing her colleagues in terms of um, trying to ask for more money or so forth, but they wanted to work as professionals there. But that made um, the, the bosses uncomfortable, and the lady um, was was pushed out of the of, of the work. So because she tried to not even unionize, she in was terms not of unionizing, but she was trying. She just to wanted talk. to get like yeah. a pro like a society professional exactly, journalist. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But but if you uh, sort of. A, 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 a group of three or two or of two journalists are coming their heads together and then um, the, the, the powers that be, they feel threatened. So despite all that, you're still optimistic about the future of journalism in I South am. Africa? I'm very optimistic there's future, yes. Well, to be like Hans, thank you so much for joining us on Global Journalist. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Josh. This is Global Journalist. I'm Josh Kranzberg in for Jason McClure. This week, interviews with international journalists who are in America as part of the Alfred Friendly Program, which connects them with U.S. news outlets to help the spread of free and accurate journalism. If you're interested in more Global Journalist content, visit, visit us online at globaljournalist.org. There you can read in-depth articles on international affairs and free press issues and download past episodes from our archive. We're also on social media. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Global Journ. Our next guest is Goce Aitulu, a reporter in Istanbul for Hurriyet, one of Turkey's largest newspapers. He'll spend his fellowship doing work for the Kansas City Star newspaper. Goce Aitulu, welcome to Global Journalist. Thank you for having me. So Turkey has never had a relatively good media landscape, uh, but the past few years has seen President Recep Erdogan uh, try and crack down more and more, including shutting down media outfits that have criticized him and the government. So what's it like there as a journalist? Um, I can say uh, two different things about this. One, uh, the, as a journalist become, uh, being there is a treasure for a journalist because you have everything, every sources. Uh, you cannot understand actually uh, the Islam crisis, refugees problem, Syrian war or Kurdish issue without understanding Turkey. This is a good thing for journalists. But on the other hand, uh, the journalism is uh, not a garden of roses in Turkey <laughs> uh, because 
uh, in World Fr Press Freedom Index 2015, we are in ranked uh, 149. Uh, this is a very bad thing uh, because we uh, struggle a lot of things just such as uh, lawsuits against journalists, uh, censorship, self-censorship, something like that. And have you, have you been censored or have you been uh, told to, to stop doing stories or stop doing interviews or stop following certain stories? Uh, I have fortune because I work for the uh, biggest independent uh, newspaper in Turkey. Uh, we have uh, also a publishing principal committee, uh, non-partial and impartial uh, publishing uh, principles we have. So if the government does something right, you'll report on that just as if they do something wrong? Uh, we can. Uh, we uh, just do our agenda. Uh, but uh, in situation in Turkey, of course, affects on journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not related to uh, opposite side or the pro-government side. This is just uh, about the situation. Um, President Erdogan uh, famously during the Gezi Park protests tried yeah. on numerous occasions to shut down YouTube, mm -hmm. shut down Twitter. Um, what was the reaction in the country when he tried to, to pull these moves? And what was the reaction in newsrooms uh, or newspapers or TV stations around the country when he tried to do that? Uh, it's not a secret. Turkey now is divided uh, between two sides. Uh, one opposition, uh, half of the population uh, is against uh, president and uh, half of them uh, support. Uh, but this is very uh, tough uh, moments, uh, like such as Gezi Park protests, and after that some low suits, and now uh, biggest terrorist attacks such as ISIS and uh, Kurdish issues. Uh, that's all effect on journalism mm -hmm. and uh, in the Western point of view you can look uh, this is not related to a standard democracy mm -hmm. you cannot uh, say uh, you cannot uh, tell a people or journalists right to this is right to think this is not right to write them uh, but the politi political situation in Turkey uh, just like that uh, courts uh, suddenly uh, just uh, de make decision about shutting down YouTube or Twitter or social media. Mm -hmm. This is a very bad thing for a standard democracy. So you say that, that Turkey is divided. That means that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that mm -hmm. there are people who agreed with those moves, who said that, that shutting down YouTube or shutting down Twitter or, or controlling the, the flow of information is a good thing. Is that correct? Not exactly okay. that, that thing, but uh, some people uh, doesn't care about uh, shutting down of YouTube or social media, uh, but uh, you know the population of Turkey mostly they care about the uh, social media and democracy. Okay, um, talk to me uh, about those protests. It started as a relatively small protest over the urban development of a park of Gezi Park, and it spiraled into massive demonstrations involving millions of people across that country, um, thousands of people injured, uh, more than 3,000 arrests. Talk to me about your time and your experience while covering those protests. Yeah, 
at the beginning, no one uh, expected uh, such a big uprising in uh, Gezi Park uh, because uh, politicians so uh, this is a really small environment pro uh, problem mm -hmm. we can solve with uh, our policies and uh, but things it, it was originally viewed as, as just a small protest that they could definitely. shut down quickly okay definitely but uh, people thought different. In all around Turkey, it became a different thing because uh, first it started with environment problem, then turned uh, opposition and opposition uh, problem. Uh, all around the Turkey, who felt. Uh, himself or herself uh, strange in the political situation uh, became a part of the uprising. Then uh, there were big uh, uprising and uh, protests all around Turkey. Mm -hmm. And so was it was it difficult um, as a journalist to to watch the crackdown of media, the crackdown of free speech, mm -hmm. was it tough not to to join in those protests that you had to just cover them objectively of, of what was happening? I think we did. Uh, we, I was working for a radical newspaper uh, and one of the objective uh, newspaper uh, of the Turkey. Uh, we did, we covered all of the uh, movement, uprising, protesters, objectively. And uh, this is a tough uh, time, tough conditions for journalists because uh, protesters didn't want to see journalists around the park mm. because uh, they didn't trust journalists. Okay. Uh, on the other hand... So you were being hated from both sides, basically. Yes. You are being hated from the government for trying to report the truth, and you were being hated by protesters because they didn't trust you. But uh, we covered some stories about Park. Then uh, protesters uh, were used to us and uh, talked us freely, and uh, we did cover uh, some big stories then. That. Do you think this? Do you see? Do you see things getting worse in Turkey, or do you think that uh, it's pretty much leveled off, or do you think mm. Erdogan will uh, continue to try and crack down on the media that uh, that is critical of him and is critical of the government? It seems like that, but I'm not a uh, pessimist person. I look optimistic. Uh, this is not a sustainable uh, thing for Turkey because we have a past, uh, we have a history uh, about democracy uh, for uh, over the 80 years and uh, this is not sustainable thing for Turkish people. Do you think, uh, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but mm -hmm. do you think um, protests will, do you think protests are coming about the crackdown of media? Do you think people are going to start demanding a free and open media in Turkey? Uh, I, actually, I don't know. Uh, we can't. Uh, they couldn't know of uh, Gezi Park uprising. This is just related to democracy. And uh, it would be uh, but uh, the thing I can only see, uh, this is not a sustain, uh, sustainable thing for Turkey. So let's switch gears now to your fellowship. Uh, you'll be working with the Kansas City Star newspaper, yeah. one of the top newspapers in the, in the country. Uh, what will you be doing with them? First, I begin in, uh, for editorial page, and then uh, we'll see. <laughs> what do you hope to get out of uh, out of this fellowship? Uh, this is amazing. Also, uh, University of Missouri 
uh, has a perfect uh, style for learning something, the methods I mean. Uh, I gained everything uh, in these two weeks and I also uh, take my experience to my newsroom, uh, share many, many things I think. Do you think it this will be amazing? <laughs> do you think it will be a a bit of a shock to go from Turkey, where um, the media is a bit more controlled, to the United States, especially mm -hmm. a, a one of the top papers like the Kansas City Star, where mm -hmm. um, investigative reporting, you know, cracking down on you know um, finding corruption and and bad things within government or within businesses is is encouraged. Do you think that will be a bit of a shock to you? No, we, we used to have investigative reporting and uh, deeply uh, investigations. But uh, it would be uh, very helpful for me as the aspect of journalism. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of Global Journalist, a production of the Reynolds Journalism Institute at the University of Missouri. Many thanks to Tobile Hans and Goitje Aitula for taking the time to talk with us. If you're interested in more Global Journalist content, visit, visit us online at globaljournalist.org. There you can read in-depth articles on international affairs and free press issues and download past episodes from our archive. We're also on social media. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Global Journ. Global Journalist Studio Director is Travis McMillan of RJI and our audio engineer is Pat Akers of KBIA. For all of us here at Global Journalist, I'm Josh Kranzberg. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thank you.